Well, as you may know, firefighters will walk off the job on Friday between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. and won't respond to any emergencies during this time. Another hour-long strike is planned for next Friday. It's the first time in history that professional firefighters around the country will walk off the job at the same time. So what is going on? What's caused this? And how can we fix the conflict between the professional firefighters and Fire and Emergency NZ? Well, joining us now is Joseph Stan the Vice President from the New Zealand Professional Firefighters Union. Hello to you, thanks so much for your time. Kia ora Chris, nice to see you again. Kia ora, you too. You're walking off the job this Friday. Um, for those who are unaware, why is that? And it's for one hour, correct? Yes it is, yep. We'll be walking off the job from between 11am and 12pm this Friday and next Friday as well. We're doing that because we've gotten to a point in our bargaining where we don't feel that FENS is taking our concerns seriously, that we have proposed a number of solutions to key issues that uh, that firefighters face in their health and safety and Fire and Emergency New Zealand isn't prepared to, to enter in those, those discussions with us. Um, I just want to say, Chris, at the very beginning, um, we're walking off the job on Friday. We've had mediation up until now. Yeah. We have said to Fire and Emergency New Zealand that we will talk to them. We will enter into that mediation at any stage between now and Friday and it's Fire and Emergency New Zealand that has said that there's no point in continuing our conversations. They're not prepared to move their position. OK, Fiends have said they've offered firefighters a pay rise of between 8 and 19% over two years. What's your response to that? Um, well, that's, that's 8 and 19%. Again, FENS continues to focus on the remuneration package that firefighters get, which is which is a key concern for us. That 19% is for is for recruit firefighters who, um, before the current minimum wage increase, actually earned less than minimum wage. So their hourly rate is less than minimum wage. They're topped up by an incidentals allowance of eight dollars a day for staying away from home for the three months they stay away from home, which just just brings them above minimum wage. So when they talk about 19%, it's 19% on a rate that's lower than minimum wage over two years. So some of this work FENS would have to do anyway to enable them to recruit and retain firefighters at the recruitment level. They have to look at the, the remuneration. What FENS is missing here in all of the conversations they're having is that firefighters are deeply concerned about their well-being, deeply concerned about their health and safety. The last time we spoke, Chris, I talked to you about the um, risk that firefighters face from firefighting cancer and the emotional trauma that firefighters um, are being faced with every day when they respond to emergency medical events. Fenn still refuses to have any conversation with the NZPFU over that, still refuses to have um, to put any solutions in place that enable us to work towards a resolution and a protection for firefighters. As well as that, they're expecting us to continue our work with our communities with lower levels of staffing and being poorly resourced. We have trucks all over the country, which has been widely um, explained in the media up until now, that are breaking down constantly. All we're asking for from Foreign Emergency New Zealand is conversation over that. And because we're not prepared to accept their lowballing of our wages, they don't want to talk to us anymore. How insulting is it too to find out the news, and you probably knew this before it hit the media, that uh, the fire service spent, I think, what, $20 million on contracts that were not properly tendered or broke government procurement rules. Is that just more of the same frustrations that you have as to what's going on? Absolutely. Um, I... I worked within Foreign Emergency New Zealand's national headquarters as a senior advisor when we created Foreign Emergency New Zealand. I was there as an operational representative. The promise that was made originally was that operations would be the focus. Our ability to serve our communities would be the focus of the organisation as we created a new organisation out of the ashes of the New Zealand Fire Service and the National Law Fire Authority. And that hasn't proven to be the case. They've just thrown money, money at things that don't have help our ability to respond to our communities, which is, it's heartbreaking. Um, we still turn out on the trucks every day. If someone rings 111, we always turn up, other than between 11 and 12 on Friday, of course, because we need to do what we need to do. But all we want Foreign Emergency New Zealand to do is listen to us. We're on the ground. We're in the best position to let the organisation know what resources we need, but they refuse to listen. 
This is pretty serious stuff, isn't it? I mean, this is, I hate to use the word, but it kind of is unprecedented. When I'm um, out and about reporting and, you know, there's a fire somewhere around Christchurch, and even just to see those signs on the trucks now, you know, um, the dispute that you have going on, and, and I say this sincerely, it, it, it's, it, it almost doesn't feel real because firefighters, they're not the kind of people that go out and just want to strike or want to create a noise. They're almost under the radar in some respects. Do, do you get what I'm saying? So, I mean, this is yep. pretty this is pretty bad that it's got to this point, isn't it? It's, it is bad. It's bad. It's terrible that, it, that it's got to this point. We've tried for the last one year and four months to resolve the issues that we've got to get fire and emergency New Zealand to understand the concerns that firefighters have for their well-being and their personal health and safety, and they're just not listening. We feel like we have been put in a position now where the only way to force foreign emergency in New Zealand to listen to us is to withdraw our labour, which is heartbreaking. Um, I don't know a firefighter, a career firefighter in the organisation that turns up to work every day and doesn't want to respond to their communities. On Friday, when we walk across the road, it's going to be hard for all of us. It's going to be a really, really tough time. We don't want to not be there for our communities, but we're stuck at the moment. Fire and emergency New Zealand won't listen. They continue to put us in harm's way without any protections or support. We've got to get our voice heard some way. What is your message then to the public over the planned strike? I mean, people watching this might think, gee, what if something happens during that period and uh, there's no assistance available? There are those volunteer firefighters and executive yes. firefighters, I understand, that will still be, yep. that still be working, yeah? Yes, yep, yep. So the response will be lessened across the country. There'll be a diminished response, but there will still be a response. We are not wanting to put our communities at risk. We just want Fire and Emergency New Zealand to listen to us. My message to the public is if you are concerned about the lack of response for this Friday and next Friday, and potentially for Fridays in the future, if we don't get listened to, please contact your MP, your local MP. Please contact Jan Tenetti, the Minister for Internal Affairs, and and let um, Jan or your local MP know how upset you are uh, about Fens's inability and um, lack of desire to talk to firefighters about uh, their strike and about their issues that they have when serving their communities. Well, speaking of the Minister, I did actually put in a request for Jan Taniti to front up on this uh, platform, but she declined. But in mm. a statement did say that she had every faith that fire and emergency uh, was doing things correctly. And, and the Minister of Internal Affairs, Defence, uh, she has met with us and we have raised our issues with her. Fantastic. She's told us that, that she can hear us, that she's heard our issues, but that's not enough for us at the moment. We need to see some practical changes. Yeah. We need to see a change in attitude from Fire and Emergency New Zealand to continue to espouse their rhetoric that they are doing everything they can to resolve this it's just untrue it's just lies and it's really really disappointing i would like to see a greater move from the government to bring foreign emergency new zealand management into line and to listen to the concerns that their firefighters have just funny how's this dispute going to end joseph I hope it's going to end with Fire and Emergency New Zealand taking the concerns that firefighters and other members of the NZPFU um, taking their concerns seriously, listening to us, providing us a forum so that we can let them know the things we need to, to be resourced properly so that we can respond to our community. Um, we will continue to do whatever we need to do to make them listen for as long as it takes. We can't continue to put ourselves in harm's way without the support of the organisation that asks us to do that. I wish you and your members well. Thank you so much for your time, Joseph Stanley. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for talking to me again.